Hey, what's up everyone? I want to make a quick video just to kind of give some insight into how you can use Python with Altrix. Now, if you're not familiar with what Altrix is, Altrix is an ETL tool. It is something that's used across different disciplines of data science, data analysis, data engineering, and it has kind of an all-encompassing canvas that has both drag and drop tools as well as also its own native scripting and it gives you the option of bringing in Python and R. So really quickly what I wanted to do here is to set something up where we are deleting files out of a directory. Typically this is done with the run command and you would eliminate the files to a batch command and get you know what you need through something a little bit more native to Altrix as opposed to Python. Let's run this really quick and let me give you a quick intro to the data set. Okay. What basically takes place here is a data set with a string and four uh, columns that are floats. I made this in Python using pandas and we can give them a little bit more context. We can call this the store ID. And these are four different metrics. We can batch them in reports and produce a couple PDFs, 30 to be exact. And then we can pull up the directory tool. Now, what we want to do is to simply get the directory alone by itself and then to pull that into the Python tool. Once we have it in the Python tool, we can do a lot of different things with it. And to get there, it's not that difficult. We need our select tool. Give it a second. <clears throat> we wanna deselect all. And we just wanna select directory. Now, we're gonna get 30 records of the directory, which is kind of useless. But what we can do here to kind of save us work in Python is to drop the summarize tool. We can group by, and then let's bring in our Python tool. You notice when you drop the Python tool in and connect it, You should see, once it goes through this, a hash one. This hash one is the stream of information that's coming in. We'll come back to that in a second. Give it a sec. Now let's run it. And what are you complaining about Python to? Production. Tools. Okay, I don't know what it's complaining about, but let's see if we can get this to work. And if not, then we're gonna have to do some quick What we want to do here is we want to connect our data frame. But before we do that, let's do some importing. Import pandas, which is the data frame library as PD. That's the common alias um, most people refer to. And then you want to import in the library we're going to use to remove the files, which is OS. Run those, seem to be okay. And then we want to do all tricks dot read pounds. Sorry, I want to do parentheses pound 
can't type today. Pound one. Let's run that, which means we have to run the whole workflow. That's something that is a problem with Ultrex and Python, is this constant having to run the workflow. Now, if you import your script and you're, you're connecting it in to do its job, it's a little bit different than, you know, writing your script as you go, which is what we're doing. Um, Ultrix isn't built for that, not yet, at least. But in the future, I can see them modifying this to give more of a, um, a developer environment, acting more like an IDE and less like an ETL tool. Okay, we were able to pull it in. So let's look at what we have. Here we go. Well, surprise, surprise. How different does this look than this? They both kind of look the same, right? Give it a sec. Exactly the same. Now the naming, the numbering convention is different, but they're essentially the same. It's not much of, of a difference. So the idea here, and the reason why I bring it up is because then we can start getting an understanding that Python is not working so differently than Ultrix. The first order of business is to get this from a data frame into a string. How do we do that? Okay, well, first things first. Let's go right into the cell and grab that and then let's call it path okay so path equals df and directory we want the values well in this particular case it's value and it will be row zero now, in the other one it was one, but here it's zero because in programming, you always start with zero. You don't start with one. And in the Python world, it's a little bit different than the Ultrix world, which is more based on, you know, non-programming people, which, okay, but the world's changing. I mean, non-programmers are becoming programmers and programmers are <laughs> becoming data scientists. I mean, it, our roles are so interchangeable. And I think the idea behind this video is, is that we can empower people to do things that typically they don't do. You know, these tools are not designed for you to become codependent on them. They're designed for you to put them together and to, you know, do some kick-ass stuff. Um, let's take a look at what we have. So we were able to isolate it. Now let's look at it. Oh, why did it come out like that? Well, it has a lot to do with these backslashes or forward slashes. I get them confused. Um, I would say these are backslashes, but these backslashes, when they end up um, together, they end up giving Ajita to Python. So we need to do some removal. How do we do that? Well, there's a couple different ways, but the easiest way, in my opinion, is to just use the native string library to, to kind of clean it up. And what we can do is do path dot replace. And the cool thing about the Jupyter Notebooks is this, and if you're, if you might be familiar with this already, but if you hit tab shift, You could see this right here. This gives you kind of a, a breakdown of how this works. So the first thing we would give it is the old value, and then the second thing would be the new value. Let's try that. Old value we want to change is this. New value we want to change it to is this. Then what we need to do is to save that to the variable.
voila, we're able to do that. So now we have our path and what we need to do now is to get there and remove the files that are located there. This is where we go back to this, the OS library. And in, go in going back to this, I think, give me a sec to pull this up a little bit. That should help us. So now you guys can see this a little bit better. What we need to do is we need to figure out a way to list everything in the directory. And how we do that is through list dir. So let's do that. Check this out. Now we listed every single file that's in there. These were the files that were generated in the batch reports and they're just sitting there. So what we need to do is we need to actually iterate through the list and to adjoin this to the path and then delete it. How do we do that? Well, first step is for each in OS dot list dir path we want to do OS dot remove which you could see all the different things that are included in remove I mean uh, in OS including remove and we can't just do this by itself so it has to be os.path and we have to join it to path x now if i execute this it, it's it's not going to give us any kind of visibility into what it did meaning that it's not going to show all the iteration that it, it, that it that took place here like we did up there um, with with this you know with this list we have a whole bunch how do we know we went through all of them well the easiest way to do that is through print and the print statement is actually your best weapon in debugging because you can figure out what's wrong with something by just doing print statements left and right until you figure it out um, most of the time in any project that I've been stuck the print statement has been my best friend and you know once you're done you get rid of them but in the during the time where you're building something you want to see what where you where you are exactly so in this particular case we're gonna call it Python Python deleted then what we're gonna do is we are going to put the name of each and since we want them on different lines we can do this so now we have a line break. It's gonna break on each one of these and it's gonna iterate through the whole list dir specified at that path. Okay, now that we have this, let's run the whole thing. Which is not gonna work because we have to run the whole workflow. Oh, I did run the workflow. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore, man. <laughs> what went wrong? Let's see. Oh. Well, what happened here? What happened here is that we called this variable each here, and then we called it x here. Um... Which one you guys want to go with? I say we go with each. Let's run it one more time. Done. And it worked. Okay. So check this out. Deleted. 
deleted, deleted. It's all deleted. Well, it says it's deleted, but is it really deleted? A couple ways we can check this, but the easiest one is to just go here and look. Um, that's not it. Let's look at PDFs. PDFs. Nope, all gone. There's nothing here. Vamos. So we were able to eliminate the files that we produced through the Python tool. This is not exactly the highest level of Python and all tricks. I mean, we didn't even decide that, hey, listen, there could have been like multiple directories. What would you have done then? You know, you'd have to come up with a plan for that, right? Or what if we wanted to go only after certain values? Or what if, you know, we wanted to check the date? You know, some of them were produced at a certain day and some of them were produced earlier and we want to get rid of the earlier ones and just keep the other ones. Or maybe we wanted to get even more complicated and, and take every single report and put it into a workbook, but save it 30 times with the name of that one particular file as the name of it. And then, you know, the, the possibilities are endless, but this was a very elementary way of dealing with it. Again, what's really important here is that the pandas data frame is the key to linking all tricks and Python together. If you can get it into a data frame, you can pretty much deal with it in Python and the Jupyter Notebook that is in Ultrix. Is it perfect? No, but it's a great place to start. If you are having issues or if you want to adapt a Python script or, or a Python library to your Ultrix workflow, I would highly recommend bringing this tool in and starting to investigate. And how you really do that is through these streams. You can also do the reverse of the stream, which we don't have anything to write, but if we did, we would write all tricks right, and then we would pull it out. We would then use it. So the all tricks Python tool becomes no different than anything else, except you're carrying out functionality that you know ranges from everything from a iterative macro to just you know data wrangling or whatever it is that you wanna do that you feel more comfortable in, in Python or maybe even you don't have the ability to do in Ultrix. There's lots of those unique opportunities there. And I appreciate you guys watching this video and any feedback, again, is appreciated as well as also if you wanna contact me through LinkedIn, I'm always interested in talking about Python and Ultrix. So till next time, take care and uh, let me know some comments of what you think about Python and Ultrix together combined.